God to give us, you know, to the speaker. Help us to have a, a heart whereby we might receive the Word of God. And God, you would bless the songs that we sung or a testimony that's given. That you might be in the house. I mean, but where the Spirit of the Lord is, I ain't never met a preacher who didn't love to preach for their people. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, praise God, to just think on that and appreciate it. We've got to go to pray for them. And if you have a prayer request this evening, particularly if you want to make it home, you'll just make it home with the Lord's prayer. But any you got on your heart or any unspoken, you know God knows about it. And remember, we got a few folks out here with us that's going to be at Millicent Fellowship. Here and see in the word, you know, the word of God that comes forth. So we want to pray for one another. A son, hopefully, is able to pick us up on the radio. And so we're hoping we're going to make that extent. If you've got a particular request, we'll start here on the left side. Let's so, get some Continue to remember us and Pam, and also Melanie Freeman, who are doing some of the same things that we're doing. Thank you, Hallelujah. 
do something this much.
say it's good to be in God's house tonight. Thank God for an opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. So I'm glad that you took the time and the effort to be here. I tell you, the Lord's certainly good. And I do believe that we're living in the last days. And what we're going to do for God, we better do in a hurry. Amen. I said, what we're going to do for God, we better do in a hurry. Amen. I was listening to somebody the other day. They said, well, said, we're living in the book of Revelations. I said, no, so we're not living in the book of Revelations. And I said, we're living in the book of Timothy, where Timothy talked about the last days, and about having been perilous times. In fact, I, I told him, I said, you don't want to stick around in the book of Revelations. I said, you don't want to be here living in those times. I, I, I tell you, the Lord's certainly good. Aren't you glad for the goodness of God today? I tell you, the Lord's been so good to us. I, I, you know, I think about what all God's done for us, how He saved us, amen. I, I, I tell you, what all he, he does for us day in, day out, you think about the goodness of God uh, through life, I tell you, the Lord is certainly good. I, I tell you what, we all got good friends, and we try to be friends with one with another, amen. There's nothing like a good old buddy, a good old friend. Uh, but I tell you, the Bible said Jesus said that He was a friend uh, that stick is closer down the road. Aren't you glad for that friend? Amen. I like what old John wrote about it over there. The Bible said in John 4 and 16. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have what? Ever last in life. Amen. Amen. Everybody's going to live on somewhere Amen. all night through eternity someday. Amen. One day. And I'm so grateful that God made a way all night that you and I didn't have to die and go to a horrible place that's called hell. I'm so glad that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. In fact, uh, the Bible said the thief might come to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, he said, I come that you might have life and have life what? More abundantly. Yes. Isn't it good to live for God? I don't know a better life for a person or to live than live for uh, the life of Christ. Amen. You know, I just tell you what, I just want to take just a few minutes and brag uh, on God. I tell you what, uh, He's been good to me, Brother Paul. I tell you, uh, I said the Lord certainly been good to me. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm reminded of what the old psalmist said over there in Psalms 40. Uh, of Psalms David as he began to pen right there. Uh, he said he brought me up out of a horrible pit. And he set my feet uh, upon a solid rock Amen. and he established uh, my goals. Amen. I, I like what he did for me. One day I was in a pit, a pit of despair. Uh, a pit that was carrying me nowhere. I couldn't get out. Uh, I couldn't help myself. It's like trying to uh, uh, pick your feet up with both hands. You just couldn't uh, can't, can't do it. Uh, uh, my, uh, but I'll tell you what, he passed by my way. Uh, oh my, isn't it a wonderful thing when God passes uh, oh, by your way? Uh, I'm reminded over there in the scripture, the Bible talks about uh, that woman down at the well. You remember her? Uh, Jesus said, I must needs go uh, up through Samaria. And Jesus passed by Samaria. Uh, he met a woman at yeah. the well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How good God is, I'm talking about. Uh, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't uh, no great reputation, no. Uh, she was a five-time loser for the land. But you know what God likes to do? Uh, he likes to take a loser and turn their life uh, around. Uh, I tell you what, that's a picture of the love uh, of God. He'll take a nobody. Uh, he'll make a somebody out of them. Uh, he'll take them out of the pit and put them in the pew. Uh, he'll take them out of the fire uh, and he'll uh, take them out of the fire and he'll put them uh, in the fire. Isn't that what God loves to do? Uh, because God loves uh, all sinners. Amen. Uh, you know, brother, uh, I tell you what I think about John 3.6 the Bible talks about how God loved the world. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I can get over there in Galatians and it tells me uh, how God loves me. He personally uh, loves me. Paul yes. paid for us. He paid for us. All the Bible bears out of John wrote the first uh, chapter of Revelation there uh, about how that he bought us and washed us in his pure, uh, all sweet blood. Uh, I'm so grateful for the God of the King of Glory. Uh, all find to take our sins. Uh, it meant wash us and justify uh, justified uh, as if we had never seen. Uh, the Bible said that he'll take those sins uh, and put them as far as the east is from the west. Uh, I'm uh, never to remember them again. Does, uh, oh, anymore. I'll tell you what, it don't get no better than that, brother Paul. We've got to pay back. 
waiting uh, up there between the first pew and the altar. Uh, he said he was crying out to God. He wanted a really an outpouring, uh, a soul saving revival. Uh, he said he, uh, he just knew that God was moving and working in the congregation. Uh, amen. Uh, and he said, you know, so the Lord spoke to him and told him uh, that 80% of his congregation was lost. Uh, in 1970, uh, uh, my, uh, at the Baptist Convention, they preached, uh, the preacher preached, uh, uh, my, he said that over 75 to 80 percent of the church uh, was lost. I'm talking about church folk, uh, not Christians. They said church folk uh, were lost. Uh, I'm talking about during the time of the morals of the nation uh, was some of the best times uh, that we knew in our lifetime. Uh, uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it ain't got no better since then. Uh, no sir. Uh, I said it ain't got any better since then. Uh, how sad an occasion it is. Uh, you know the greatest uh, it meant, uh, uh, the Bible talks about the fields are being uh, are wiped uh, under the harvest, but the laborers uh, are few. Uh, we were talking the other day about young preachers being called, little Harry, uh, in our churches. Uh, I've been in the same church for uh, 12 years, so far. Uh, I'll leave in a short stint, but anyway, uh, uh, we have given one call to preach uh, the gospel. Brother Ike uh, at his church over there down to the years, uh, he's not had one that I know of uh, that was called to preach. Uh, uh, you say, Brother Gary, what's going on? Oh uh, my, uh, hey, things are winding up. Uh, I said, you better get ready. Uh, hey, my, the Lord uh, is soon coming. Hey, man, uh, and for those that's left behind, it's going to be uh, one of the saddest days uh, oh my, uh, in the history of humanity for those uh, that are left behind. Uh, he said, Brother Gary, they're going to be left behind. Hey, man, uh, the Bible said, uh, hey, man, you must be born again. Uh, yeah. You remember John chapter yeah. 3, Jesus? Uh, oh my, talking to Nicodemus. Demons. Uh, the Bible bears out that old Nicodemus was a rich man and ruled the Jews, uh, a very educated man. Uh, yes. Now to be a Pharisee, Bible history, I uh, uh, would tell us that he had to memorize the first five books of the Bible. Uh, he was a pretty sharp individual. Uh, he had a good memory, brother. Uh, it, man, I, I would call that a very good memory, uh, but I dare say that he went and exceeded that of a, a routine Pharisee. Uh, but when he came to Jesus, the Bible said that he came to Jesus by night, uh, and Jesus looked at no doubt I thought I thought. Uh, he said, Nicodemus, uh, he said, you must be born again. Uh, he said, more of all can I say that you must be born again. Uh, he told him the third time that you must be born uh, of the water uh, and of the spirit. It might, uh, you know, the reason Jesus told that but told Nicodemus that you must be born again. Uh, because you must uh, be yes. born again. Uh, yes. Now, Second Corinthians 5, 17. Uh, I quote it every time I preach. Why? Uh, I don't want to center uh, off my to leave there not knowing whether he's in uh, or whether he's out. Uh, a person needs to know whether he's in uh, whether he's been formed again. Uh, second Corinthians 5, 17. So therefore, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, all things are passed away and behold, uh, all things become new. Uh, uh, my, uh, he said, you know that you pass the death of the life because why? Uh, you love uh, the preacher. Amen. Uh, 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 there's a fellow one time told me he was one of my boss men. He was one of, uh, one of the upper, uh, upper folks uh, in, 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 uh, in, in the department there. Uh, and he asked me, he said, uh, he said, how do you know if you say that? I said, well, uh, you know, I'll give you just a quick short answer. I said, well, uh, if you don't know, it's a dead giveaway, what we call a dead giveaway, uh, that you're not coming. Uh, hey, man, uh, I said, if you don't know that you're saved, it's a dead giveaway that you're not coming. Uh, the Bible said, you know, I, I heard this fellow say one time, uh, he said he believed that somebody could be saved uh, and not know No, sorry. Uh, I said, hell told that lie. Uh, I said, hell told that lie. Uh, if a person's truly born again, he'll know it. Uh, how you ain't going to just have to swim through the pearly gates uh, and God not know you there. Uh, 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 hey, man, I'm glad that when he, when he saved us for the Paul, uh, he wrote our name down. Yes, hey, man, yes, man. Yes, oh, man. Uh, how good it is. Uh, that was said, told me the other day he was walking out toward his truck. Uh, uh, man, you know, I told him to tell the scriptures to ponder on for the day. Uh, he said, well, you know Jesus? I said, I sure do. Uh, I said, but better than that, he knows me. Uh, yeah, uh, man. Man. I said, yeah, man. does he know you? It's a question. Uh, yeah. Oh, my. Uh, he's coming back after he is. Uh, uh, there's a lot of folks that know him, uh, but he don't know them. Uh, yeah, you remember man. that old man, yeah, man. one of the Bible that told us the Lord? Uh, said, we uh, have to not cast out devils in our name. Uh, he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Uh, he said, I never knew you. Uh, uh, first of all, we ain't going to stand before God with a rat in your pocket. No, uh, there ain't no 
no way you're going to stand before God. You'll stand before God alone uh, and be judged one day uh, on the day of judgment. Uh, and there's going to be those uh, that aren't left behind. Amen. Uh, 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 and you don't want to be uh, uh, left behind. Uh, heaven's real. Uh, I said God's prepared a place for you. Uh, and heaven is real. Uh, but just as sure as heaven is real, uh, it might not count of hell. Uh, it might is just as real. Uh, it's just as long as eternity. Amen. The Bible said everlasting life for those that are born again. But for those that are condemned, oh my, it's everlasting punishment or judgment. You say, Brother Gary, where is that place? Well, today the modern preachers will tell you, oh my, that you're just separated from God. Oh my, oh my, to the drunkard, the dope dealer, those that live in sin and fall in sin. That'd be a wonderful thing for them, wouldn't it? But it's more than just being separated from God. Hey, it's going to be a true separation of uh, my, uh, and it'll be sacked within itself. Uh, but there's a whole lot more that goes on than just being separated uh, from God. Uh, now, in Luke chapter 16, the Bible said that there was a rich man. Uh, the Bible declared him to be a certain rich man, uh, which was clothed in purple and fine linen uh, and fared sumptuously every day. Uh, 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 he, he had to drink, didn't he? And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Which was light and became full of sores, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. For all the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. No, the Bible never declared his name here. And in hell, the Bible said he lived his eyes being in torments. Notice that word torment has an S on the end of it. It is plural. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried. Notice that word. And he cried. Oh, mine said, Father Abraham. He said, How? mercy on me and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame but Abraham said son no son like this in your Bible remember oh my hey, you can may not remember the songs that we sung tonight oh my before you get to the house but you might remember this here if you might tell your destination oh I will have eternity uh, to think about the three songs that we sang here in the choir tonight. Uh, the message that's being preached. Uh, the message that was preached last night. Uh, and the testimony the other day. Uh, oh God, you'll have a vivid memory. Uh, I talked to him about it. it may not be real good now. Uh, I, uh, sometimes a bad memory is a wonderful thing. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, but when you get to the other side. Uh, if you miss heaven. Uh, oh God, and you spend eternity in hell. Uh, when God tells you to remember. Remember, you can't forget. I said you could forget if you wanted to. Yeah, your memory ain't going to be the best that it's ever been. Oh my. He said, but Abraham said, Son, said, remember that in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. He said, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. He's not just being tormented, but the torments of hell is that that's tormented. For many him. And beside all this, uh, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix so that they which would pass from hence to you uh, cannot. Uh, it's a neither uh, can they pass to us uh, that would come from thence. Uh, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, uh, that thou would send him to my father's house. Uh, he said, For I have five brethren. Uh, he said that they may testify unto him. Uh, he knew what testify was all about. Uh, he knew uh, he found his five brother. Uh, he knew exactly what his father's house. Uh, and he knew he was there. He said, lest they also come to this place of what? A place of torment. He said, Abraham said unto him, he said, they have Moses and the prophets and let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham. He said, but if one went unto them from the dead, he said, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they they be persuaded to one uh, uh, rose from uh, the dead. Uh, the Bible bears out here in chapter 16 it might, uh, about a rich man. Uh, a certain rich man. The Bible bears out that he died. Uh, it man, uh, and the Bible said in hell uh, he lived his eyes. Uh, a man that bears so 
Oh my, he eat the best that groceries had to offer. He lived in the best house, no doubt that money could buy. Oh my, he eat the good food, he eat the good of the land. Oh my, he fared sumptuously. He had the finest clothes that money could buy. Oh my, but you know the sad part of it was, it took a trip to hell for him to see how good God had been to him in this lifetime. Oh my, there's so many today can't see or what we would say the forest from the trees. Oh my, they can't see the goodness of God, amen. Oh my, because they love this world. But you know what the Bible said about this old world? It said, love not this world. Oh my, it said, if you love the world, you was an enemy of God, amen. We're not to love this world. The Bible said this. He said, what would a man give in exchange? What for his soul, amen. The Bible said, what problem a man got? The whole world but yet lose his own soul. Oh, you don't want to gain nothing if you're going to lose your soul. This rich man here, if I, he lived it up, he was surrounded by the best. The best that life had to offer. No doubt when he looked at the gate outside of his house, a big old fine mansion, no doubt. He seen that gate. He seen an old beggar laying out there with the name of Lazarus. Oh, my. That deserved the crumbs from the rich man's table. Oh, my. He would just like to have some of the crumbs uh, that man uh, and the Bible said that uh, he was full of sores and the dogs came uh, and licked his sores. Uh, it, man, but the Bible said that he died uh, in hell. He lived up his eyes. Uh, oh my, you say, Brother Gary, what was he lifting his eyes to? Uh, oh my, uh, you know that hell's in the heart of the earth. Uh, oh my, uh, when he got in hell, just one heart beat, he was here. Uh, oh my, surrounded with all the things of life uh, that money could buy. Uh, what money had to offer, but the next heartbeat he was in hell, of being tormented, of not away from God, away from his family, away from that that he had on this side, and now he's being tormented in those flames. Of the Bible said this fell from the lips of Jesus in Mark chapter nine. The Bible bears out this. It might. Said if I hand the fifth eats and cut it off, it's better for thee to enter in the life maze than have having two hands and to go into the hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Now that's Jesus preaching here. He said, Where the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. He said, If thy foot of him they cut it off, it's better for thee to enter in the life, hold in the life, than having two feet be cast into hell, into the fire. That never shall be quenched, where the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. If thy eye open thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than entering having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. He said, where the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. Amen. All my church, listen to me. Fifty-four times in the word of God you will hear about the word called hell. I said 54 times. It's a real live account of a man, of a man that is in hell. This man died. Somebody else assumed his way of You know we're not promised tomorrow. There's not one. There's not one of you in here tonight that's promised tomorrow. But my question to you tonight, amen, is not what kind of Bible you got on the yard. It's not how many times you come to the house of God. Hey, the devil don't care how many times you come to church. He don't care how many times you sing in the choir. Oh my, if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're not born again, he don't care about the rest. Oh my, you can be the best actor there is. Oh my, you know our churches are full of actors. I used to think that all of them was in Hollywood. But you know, a lot of them are in the house of God today putting on a pretty good show. But you know what? God's not coming looking at the actors now. I say God's not coming back looking at the actors. He's coming back after the pride of Christ. We're living in a generation of deception as I've already said. People think that they can live any old way, do any old thing, and be any old way in life. And God's pleased with it. Oh my, today we have those. Oh my, these alternate lives. 
styles. They can't get away. I can remember 20 years ago, their moms and their daddies, all mine that ain't me, and they wanted you to preach against that stuff. To let a little Johnny or little Susan come talk one day, change the war, all mine. And now, all mine, they don't want you preaching against that stuff anymore. But let me tell you something. God said it was sin and still sin. All mine. God hated him. He still hates it today. He ain't changed to the bit. No matter how preach it, I am the Lord my change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen. I remember old Sam Young years ago. I thought I asked whatever he said. He said, you know, he said, he said, a dancing fool and a praying meat don't grow in the same way. Oh, no, sir. And preached against everything. He preached everything to hell back then. And name sins. We don't do it anymore. Oh, my. We just put it in a big old category out there and hope it don't fall on nobody. It don't offend nobody. It don't reprint nobody. It don't reprove anybody. Oh, my. They leave just as comfortable smiling. He wasn't preaching to me. He was preaching them across the aisle. Oh, my. But you know, it don't hurt. It might put preachers to back up and just preach the word of God. Amen. I heard a preacher say the other day, what was wrong in America today? Amen. With preachers, they preach like they have a hernia on the lung and a bunny on their tongue. He said, it just couldn't preach anymore. You know, God's people need to, amen. Preachers need to preach the word today. The Bible said this man died and somebody assumed all his wealth. That big old fine home, that old gate, all night with that paper laid out in front of. Somebody else owns that thing today. Oh my. You know, the Bible said this big man, he asked for a drop of water to go his parts and tongue. Just some lines was all night. If you can get one drop of water out of a bottle of good wagon to hell, you can cause one of the greatest battles ever known to humanity in a horrible place. All night, everybody would want but you know what? 2,000 years later, amen. He still, Brother Paul, won't water. I said he still on one water. Oh my, how sad an occasion that it is. I will tell you something. He was being tormented in that horrible place. Amen. You know what the sad part of it is? In our generation, our churches today, I'm talking about moms and daddies, grandpas. Oh my, I tell you what, they got their loved ones, they got their children, and they're headed to hell, and it seems like nobody cares. I'm just being real. Like nobody cares. You know, I tell you what, they just don't want them about the horrible place. A lot of preachers across our land today, they don't want them about this horrible place. That's called hell that burns day in and day out all through eternity. The Bible said when there was weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, how horrible a place it's going to be. Oh, mama, it'd be a horrible thing. Oh, my, that's how your children miss out on the most glorious city uh, there is. Uh, the most blessed time uh, of mine down to the ages uh, is spending eternity uh, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, in the celestial city. Uh, he's gone to prepare. Uh, you know, I think about that horrible place and, uh, you know, uh, you say, Brother Gary, you're trying to scare me tonight. Uh, I would to God that I could. Uh, I said the Bible said that don't know. Uh, moved with fear uh, to the preparing uh, amen of the ark. Uh, to the saving of his house. It wouldn't be a bad thing to get scared about uh, that place called hell. Uh, but you know uh, what's that? Uh, Paul, uh, they're not scared about hell much anymore. Uh, why? Uh, they never hear it preached anymore. Uh, 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 you know, a lot of people just don't believe it. Uh, but I'll tell you what, hell's just as real uh, as heaven is. Uh, it'll last just as long down to the ages uh, as heaven will. Uh, and it's a horrible place. Uh, and you don't want to go. I said, you don't want to go. What person in the right mind? I said, what person in the right mind? If you woke up to a walk this morning, your neighbor's house was burning down. Oh, now, what would you do? I said, what would you do? You wouldn't take time to get dressed. You'd run over there and beat the door down time to get out. Oh, my, but you know what the sad part of it is? We got loved ones. We got neighbors. It's a high head to hell. And it seems like the church. Side. Side. Over this night, you have all the law enforcement people coming out. I'm looking for her. I'm down on the 
I'm serious. A young man and I are in this tonight. You can call that a body. You wouldn't sleep, but you, but you know what? We got mamas across our church house full of mamas and daddies. They're young and slow in the hell. All mine. And they're nice to see. Nice to see. <laughs> Living in your water. You can go to church if you want to. That boy of mine knows what time it is Sunday morning. It's time to go to the house of God. No excuses for going to the house of God. I can sit the same office in the middle of the house and I can sit in the same office. A lot of folks like me to sit in the church. I said, they think that they live here, right? They don't make heaven. They're home. God's coming back up the road. You've got to watch. Those that are loving is a fear. Amen. The question is, are you ready to go? Because you don't want to be a man of fear. You say, well, Brother Gary, says, well, I'm just, I'm making through the tribulation somehow or another. I just won't take the mark of the He said, because he didn't love the truth or the pain. The word of God, the knowledge, he said, he didn't come to walk. Go read the day of mine. He said, it's in them a the strong delusion, what he said. They believe a lie. And what? They back. They might. That's exactly what God said. He said, well, I, they don't believe you much anyway. Amen. You believe a lie, they die. I said, who's going to send that strong delusion? The Bible said, God would send them a strong delusion. They believe a lie. They might be back. What a horrible place. A horrible place that burns for it. Forever and forever. No mercy, no praise. No mind. Memory that will be sharper than it ever was. You'll remember every time you had a birthday call. Every time you heard your mom and them playing for you, crying out to God, begging God to save you. Every time the preacher preached till he was so wet with sweat. Every time the Sunday school teacher told you about the love of Jesus and how much Jesus loved you. I went to an old rugged cross and died for you and shed his blood. I rose the third day and ascended to the Father. Said to the right hand of the Father, Amen, making me recession for you. The Bible said, Thou art inexcusable. Aren't you say, Oh my, I have a lot of folks today got a lot of excuses that ain't going to hold water. Oh my, you were in the great supper, the great supper that was prepared. Amen. He, he, he called them to it. And one said, I, I bought a piece of money. Uh, one of them said, I just can't come. Uh, 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 you know, those, those excuses get washed back then. Uh, I'm sure you wouldn't think uh, them excuses I got today ain't going to hold water either. Amen. 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 A rich man that died in hell lived his life. Isaiah 5 14 said, Therefore hell has a large for sale. Open your mouth without measure. And their glory, their multitude upon them. And he that rejoices shall be seen to be. He that rejoices shall be screamed. Drunken conduct mocking God's judgment. Distorts God's full standards. Arrogance and pride. Perverted justice. You know what the sad part of it is? I ain't going to be a lot of good church folks. That place is called hell. For the perverts of our day, the, the most atrocious, the martyrs, the sodomites, first one thing to know is in that part of the planet. I will spend eternity with them. Good mamas and daddies. There are a lot of good mamas and daddies there. Not mine. They didn't have no intention of going. Not one little bit that they ever intended to go. They had some preacher. And patted them on the back, told them everything was good. They come to church with a King James person, I go along, black, dressed in church. They look good, they play the part. But you know what? We just never got to know. Good moments, good friends. Okay. Went to church all the while, carried the guns, did this and that. They would come there, had a switch back there, had a swat them every time they. Moved, done anything wrong, strike the inbound. Help the feet to fight. All night. Life was good. It ain't bad. But you know what? The good old grandma said, he's there. Because, not, not the life of the streets or the care of the church. Not the end of the world. Amen. 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 Am
have God the most important way to Jesus. Well, God, it's not good to know you. Amen. No excuses. No exemptions. Not good. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. How shall we escape if we're the way so the way? How shall we escape? He started begging his prayer. Yeah. His first prayer was he wanted what? Then he wanted him to send somebody back. He witness to his mouth there. His memory was shut up. His eyes were good. A man in hell will have the best five senses he's ever had. I went to the river carried him on my motor and I said, I put your boat in the middle of the river. That's your motor, man. I'm going to catch your boat. I thought you could see me. I got to bring it out. I said, I'm going to do it. The Bible said that there was a great good prepared between the two. He looked up there and he saw Father Abraham. God give a man hell great news. God gave a man hell great fear. God gave a man hell great things. He felt the pain over and over and over. You'll hear the word torment. He was tormented. one moment, a broke beggar in hell the next. In his distress, he said, what is this distress? When a burning, unprincipled fire. Where the fire is not quenched, the worm dies not. No water, no mercy, and no hope. An eternal separation and a light of Never ending, never consuming. No. And inside. Out of darkness forever and forever. All oh, night. A miserable place. No longer. Any kind. Like I said, he'll have all senses. He'll smell the smoke. He talked to Abraham. He prayed. Yet his prayers fell on to his head. The only thing he could tell too was those memories. 
those precious memories that he had. You miss heaven. You spend eternity in hell. You'll have time to remember everything you've ever done. Everything. You'll remember every time you read the word God. Made it. Okay. Every time you sat in a Sunday school room, you turn your attention somewhere else. All night. How sad a time it's going to be. Memory is a faculty of the soul. As long as the soul lives, the memory will live on. He remembered Abraham and Lazarus. He remembered the water. He remembered Carson. He remembered his father. His brothers, his mother, <laughs> and the prophets. All how said it was. A real live account of a man in heaven. Proverbs 27 wants to boast not thyself to the mother. I may not be on the mother. I don't know. I don't know. What is that? I don't know. Things are heaven to gain and a hell to show. Divine torments. Nobody escapes that horrible torment. Being in torments. Just consider for a moment. Where is it? One drop of water. Areas of deception in this world. That's what we Everybody thinks everybody's going to hell. But the fact of the matter is, it's The Bible said that there was a matter of what he did. God ain't coming back after loading. God walked this night. You know that call for a I said, God's not coming back after loading. God walked this night. Amen. I said, Will a man rob God? God probably won't never go to three for you. He took that to God. I said, God probably won't never take three for you. I said, God saved me. God will give us all the food that you are. And he wants all the food. Because when he comes, you do want to get all the food. All right, man, you better give him a hundred percent. I said, you better give him a hundred percent. And a lot of folks think he's just going to be able to give away from that. He's not coming back after the hand. He's coming back after them that have made themselves in. He's coming back after those without a small or range. That old high priest when he went in behind the veil, he couldn't as much as have a drop of sweat. He couldn't have nothing in his life. He paid all the price to be and go to man. Brother Paul, he's coming back after the church. I'll say this. Everybody thinks that box good. But they look at that old generation. That old generation started out of Abel's bondage. How many made it to the land of promise? 
Try to witness to them. I heard a preacher say one time he went to pray for a man in the hospital. He was about to die. And said, he told him, he said, get his feet out of the fire. His feet was on fire. Laying in the hospital. Bed. And said, the rector said he looked at him and said, is this the hell that y'all told me? To live a good life. Uh, it'd be bad to leave Russia, China, some of those foreign countries, and the jungles of South Africa. God, that God. But it'd be a horrible thing to leave right here. Up to go back to church and church to you. Slip out and return to lost without God. Church here tonight. God's coming back after. And he's coming back after the man. And he ain't taking nothing else. How many want to hear the words well done about this man? Is that what you want to hear? He's got a big coach, he's done well. He's a dog. I see it's a dog.
the seven Paul read. We thank you this, this evening that we've been able to come and call it your house. Be able to sing, to be able to fellowship, and Father, to be able to hear the word of God. Yes. We ask you now that you take this word and Father, that it be to us, Father, that that fire and that hammer. Father, to Word, I pray, in our hearts and in our life to accomplish all that is needed. We pray tonight, Father, for salvation, for the lost, Father, that you put upon our hearts and help us that we might do uh, as the brother has done tonight. And, and Father, sound out that warning. Yes. Father, because you are a merciful and a loving God. 
Father, so brother reminded us even tonight that they've been Noah preached for 120 years. Father, they've been in it rained. Judgment came. Father, it's coming. I pray tonight that you touch our hearts, that you would help us, Father, those of the church to be a light, to be a witness, to be a help. Father, put your hand upon us now. Keep us. Bless us as we continue on in this meeting. Father, you give us the time. We pray you just meet with us, visit us, I pray, during these days, during these times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. And, uh, you'll come on back tomorrow night. We'll look forward to hearing from you. I appreciate God's name here.